solids, liquids, and gases. We talked about these categorizations before. Okay, so look around wherever you're sitting right now and try to identify a few solids, a few liquids, and a few gases. Okay, so solids, liquids, and gases. You're going to see all kinds of animations related to this uh, in class and uh, through some links on Edmodo and everything like that. And if you just do a search on YouTube, you'll find a whole bunch of silly and really good examples as well too. So people like to represent solids, liquids, and gases using little dots or particles like this. So in general, you can see that solids have particles that are packed really closely together. Liquids, the particles seem to be able to flow around each other a little bit more, okay? But still not so much space in between them. And gases, the particles seem to be a lot more spaced out and maybe more energy moving around, which you can't really see in something like this. Uh, that's not an animation. Um, we're gonna see a little image of this showing smoke particles moving around as well too, and a few other links. Basically, if you're looking at solids, liquids, and gases, uh, solids, by definition, you can say they are difficult to squash. So it's hard to squish, hard to squish solids. So if something's already quite solid, like this iPhone, I can't really easily change the shape of it without ser seriously damaging this thing. It has a definite shape and volume. Liquids take the shape of the container. If I pour liquids into a bottle like this, random act of kindness, and then the liquid is actually up in here. The liquid takes the shape of whatever container I put it in. That's a characteristic of liquids. Uh, also difficult to squash, which you can't really tell here, all right? But if you put it into a syringe, it's something we're going to actually try. You can't squash liquid. It moves around, but you can't actually uh, squeeze it down and make it take up less space than it actually does. And liquid can flow. Gases also can flow depending on if, if there's no color for the gas, you can't see it, but the gas actually does flow, and we're going to do some experiments to demonstrate that that actually happens. Gases also fill in any container. This room, this classroom is filled with gas right now as well, too. Not gas that I've produced, but gas that's actually, uh, it's just air, okay? I'm able to live, survive, because there's air in here, there's gas. If I take a deep breath like this, then my lungs fill up with more gas. <sighs> If I breathe out, then a lot of that gas escapes. There's oxygen and carbon dioxide and a whole bunch of other things. Nitrogen's in there as well, too. Um, so gases fill any container. They flow like liquids. And one thing that separates gases from liquids is that they're easy to squash. And we're going to demonstrate that. Squash means to squeeze it down and make it take up less space than it did before. But the pressure may increase. So you're going to be able to understand that. So maybe you want to write that down as well, the pressure may actually increase. Okay, so if you can do a quick sketch of those as well, that would be really helpful. Okay, um, that is a nice looking toilet. Why am I showing you that? Because it's solid. Those are cute little babies. Why am I showing you that? Because they're in liquid water. And here's a gas. I believe this gas is kind of brown colored. Uh, this is nitrogen dioxide gas. Doesn't sound very good and it isn't something you should very uh, much inhale. And one last thing for this video, the particle model of matter, okay, we talked about, you can call these different things. Yeah, you can call it the particle model, you can call it particle theory, um, some people call it kinetic theory, that's K-I-N-E-T-I-C, kinetic theory. Um, but there are these five ideas here, and we'll go into some of them in a little bit more detail. <laughs> I just demonstrated sneezing and moving a lot of air gas molecules quickly from my face to the world or to the table over there. Gross. The particle model of matter. The idea here is that all the matter that's around us is made up of particles we talked about. Okay. Particles could be, oh, these are, this is coming up in a second. The particles can be of different sizes. You can have larger particles and smaller particles and we're going to see this in various experiments as well. Water, liquid water is made up. You know that water is H2O. So actually when you're drinking water, you're drinking a bunch of H2O molecules is the word, or I could just say particles for now. But H2O is, if I call that one particle, one water particle, 
that can be broken down into smaller particles. So you can have an O particle, H, H. Those are called atoms and molecules. But for now, we're just thinking of all of them as small particles that could be of different sizes, some larger ones, some smaller ones. And that's going to explain a lot of different things. Um, particles can have energy. They move around by themselves in a random way. Now be careful about that. Random way makes it sound like they're alive and choosing which direction they're going to go. They're not bugs. Bugs are living things and they fly towards food or away from danger. Particles, we don't consider them to be alive, although sometimes they look like they're alive. We're going to try to explain that a little bit later. So put a star next to number three. Particles can attract each other. So some particles can be positively charged or negatively charged. And uh, you may have heard of, you know, if you have two positives, they may repel, push each other away like magnets, north and south, or north and south would attract each other. So a positive and a negatively charged particle might attract each other. So they'll interact with each other in very, in very interesting ways as well too. And number five, really important, and this is really cool, and this idea it's going to help you explain a lot of things. The hotter the substance, the faster the particles actually move. So make sure you understand that. Okay? Some scientists call this model the kinetic theory. Kinetic means movement. So if you have questions, please post them. Thank you.